to elaborate a little bit on the Facebook, the sure. administration to Facebook, flagging of disinformation, and then there's also some reporting uh, that we've had that Facebook maybe hasn't been uh, as proactive as the White House would like it to be in response to some of the flagging. So the process of how the flagging works and then whether Facebook has been amenable to those requests. Sure. Well, I would say first, it shouldn't come as any surprise that we're in regular touch with social media platforms, just like we're in regular touch with all of you and your media outlets about uh, areas where we have concern, uh, information that might be useful, information that may or may not be interesting to your viewers. You all make decisions just like the social media platforms make decisions, even though they're a private sector company and different, but just as an example. So we are ma regularly making sure social media platforms are aware of the latest narratives dangerous to public health that we and many other Americans seeing are seeing across all of source social and traditional media. And we work to engage with them to better understand the enforcement of social media platform policies. So let me give you an example just to illustrate it a little bit. Uh, the false narrative that remains active out there about COVID-19 vaccines causing infertility, something we've seen out there flowing on the internet quite a bit in other places as well, which has been disproven time and time again. This is troubling, uh, but a persistent narrative that we and many have seen, and we want to know that the social media platforms are taking steps to address it. That is inaccurate, false information. If you are a parent, you would look at that information and that would naturally raise concerns, but it's inaccurate. Uh, and that is an example of the kind of information that we are flagging or raising. And then is Facebook then as proactive as the White House would like in terms of its response to its flags? Well, I think as I noted yesterday, Phil, there is more, there are more steps uh, that uh, everyone can take. And I would just note again, this is a responsibility of uh, officials speaking, of course, on behalf of the government. It's a responsibility of members of the media. It's the responsibility of uh, citizens and civic leaders and people who are trusted voices in communities around the country. That has a broad definition. Social media platforms is one of them. And as we know, it is also a, er, there are also areas where a lot of people get news and information. Sometimes those are accurate news items uh, reported by some of your outlets or accurate information shared by a neighbor. Sometimes there is information that is not. It is hard to discriminate, as we know. This is not a new issue, but it is an issue that is impacting people's lives. So a couple of the steps that we have, um, you know, that could be constructive for the public health uh, of the country are uh, providing uh, for, for Facebook or other platforms to measure and publicly share the impact of misinformation on their platform uh, and the audience it's reaching, uh, also with the public, with all of you, um, to create robust enforcement strategies that bridge their properties and provide transparency about rules. You shouldn't be banned from one platform and not others uh, if you are for uh, uh, providing misinformation out there. Taking faster act action against harmful posts. As you all know, information travels quite quickly. If it's up there for days and days and days, when people see it, you know, there's, it's hard to put that back in a box. And of course, promoting quality information algorithms. I don't know how they work, but they all do know how they work. Um, so those are some of the steps that we uh, think could be constructive for public health, for public information, uh, for public, uh, and you know, the right of the public to know.